Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this week's new episode of X Vlog Live. I'm your host, Mr. Boomstick XL. And ladies and gentlemen, we have some breaking news. I mean, talk about a week that went from, well, Xbox hasn't dropped any new information to, oh my God, Asa, what are we going to talk about first? Uh, not only do we have the financials, not only do we have what Xbox has been up to in regards to console sales, but we also have breaking news. Uh, they are the first salvo out of the gate for what is going to be our new E3, whatever it's going to be called moving forward. That's right. Aaron Greenberg, uh, the man, the myth, the legend, dropped some incredible information. And I have that press release we're going to get into momentarily. But before we do, i got to welcome an Asa from Games on Daily, one of my favorite places, not only because he keeps it real, he keeps the show grounded, but they also have his crazy partner, known as the Gaz, as Mr. Sauce himself, who was a guest two weeks ago, and I would imagine that after, I don't know how you topped last week's episode. I'm going to be honest with you, it was, it was fire, dude. It was really well done, and of course, you know, you guys deliver, but how, are, how have you been, and uh, what you been up to, man? Do you know what? I was I was feeling absolutely fantastic. And then I saw this Forza Horizon. Is that four? Forza Horizon 4 footage going on at the moment? That, is this you, Boomstick? It is. <laughs> is this you? You are not allowed to use the rewind button. I'm not having it. So I was doing fine. And then I saw you rewind through the race. And I thought, oh, no, what have I done? I've no, ruined it. Um, I've it's, ru it's fantastic. It's great to be here. Um, and I've seen you playing this. I've seen you playing a bit of the uh, Sonic races as well. Going through yes, a bit of the, yes, yeah. the back catalogue of races. Fascinate. All I can say is that my nephew, uh, Tyler, who is uh, now become an Xbox fan. I, I bought him his first Xbox a couple of weeks ago uh, just for being an awesome and amazing nephew. And he can't stop playing it. He has a Series S and... Uh, one of the things that he wanted to do, and I think it has a lot to do with the Sonic movie, uh, Sonic 2 movie that came out. He, mm -hmm. We spent all weekend playing lots of older Sonic games that you can find uh, either on Xbox Game Pass or in your collection. And guess what, folks? If you have them in your collection, you're not charged at anything to play. You just press the play button and there you go. And uh, I've been infatuated with the uh, Sonic racing. I, ju I just think I mean, I, so much so that I... Uh, had a, a, a very large discussion, Asa, on um, Tuesday's Xbox Factor podcast where I really believe it is a missed opportunity by the heads of Microsoft not to have their own kart racer, just considering the IP's characters and development houses that they have. Oh, I mean, open you know, opportunity. Also... Open opportunity that's going to get grander when they've got Activision Blizzard's oh, IP dude. as well. Yeah, it, it. I mean, think about it. They're gonna. They. they, they what's interesting about that conversation, which we're not going to have today, but being that you brought it up, I got to say it. Uh, pre E three twenty eighteen, they had six studios. Post E three twenty eighteen, once this deal is done, and it looks like it's going to get done, thirty four plus studios. I mean, talk about turning the Titanic around, and you just got to clap. You got to give them the golf clap to. Uh, to um, to Aaron Greenberg, Phil Spencer, uh, Sarah Bond, Larry Herb, uh, Rubenstein, uh, Jeff is a good friend of mine. That team has just, and of course, it's not just them. It's it's everyone at Microsoft and specifically at Xbox because you know Phil always talks about that that it's it's a team effort, and I believe that. But I mean, the turnaround uh is incredible. And as a matter of fact, that is one of the topics of today. The numbers have come out for their uh, third quarter. And they are pretty damn incredible. Uh, everything's everything's in the green, yeah. But let let let's get over to uh, first of all. Let me welcome in the 100 people we already have here, which is amazing. I mean, we're only 12 minutes, four minutes in, and we already have 117 people here. And look at that number, 117. Is one of those people a uh, master chief? I don't know, but I hope so for sure. Um, I want to thank everybody that's here. Um, I just wanted to make a quick announcement. Um, obviously, uh, primetime gaming is, uh, in its third year, uh, of, of existence. Uh, it's a show that I have the pleasure and honor of sharing with, uh, with, uh, with the likes of Everborn Saga and Kay Asante and Wandering Dutch and now Crispy Bomb, who has joined the fray. Um, it's, it's, it's a show. And of course, the best one of the, uh, the, the, the biggest personality of the bunch is Mac, who does incredible, 
uh, obviously skits that he's known for, kind of like Gaz, uh, very, very similar mm-hmm. to what Gaz does. And uh, I, we are officially leaving Monday evenings and we will reappear on Wednesday evenings. And the reason why we've decided to do that is because uh, of of a good friend of the show, many friends of the show, as a matter of fact, there are a couple of podcasts on Monday uh, and you have, you know, Mav does his show, uh, it's Fun Speculation. Uh, we also have We Bleed Green, which I love everybody on that panel. Uh, and of course, Colt Eastwood with XNC. And what, what we noticed was happening is it was a fractured audience. And I got I was getting lots of messages from people asking, hey, man, boom, I, I, I love your show, but I go to Colts or I can't be there because I'm watching someone else's that starts before you. So we are going to move to Wednesdays. Uh, and that's going to we're going to be starting at the same time, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And uh, we hope that you can come over and join us on the new time slot and the new day. And that's not starting this week. This this upcoming Monday is going to be the regular scheduled program. It's the following week that we're going to move into, of course, the new Wednesday slot. And again, hopefully you can join us. But Asa, let's get into what uh, was dropped very early and, uh, you know, and, 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 and expected. I mean, you know, June is around the corner. We're starting May next week. And uh, it was only a matter of time before everyone started to kind of gear up, if you will, for E3 2022 or whatever it's going to look like. I'm, I hate to say this, folks. I'm always going to call it E3 because, well, that's how it's been my entire gaming life. So I guess I'm going to have to take some time to get used to it. But I have the press release that comes to us the way of news.xbox.com. Of course, the it is for the Xbox Wire editor, editor-in-chief, Will Tuttle, dropped this this morning at 6 a.m. And this is what he had to say, folks. Um, Today, we're excited to announce that Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase will stream on Sunday, June 12th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. This show will feature amazing titles coming from Xbox Game Studios, Bethesda, and our partners around the world. The Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase will include everything you need to know about the diverse lineup of games coming soon to the Xbox ecosystem, including upcoming releases to Xbox Game Pass, on, uh, to, to Game Pass on Xbox and, of course, PC. The Xbox and Bethesda Showcase will stream on a variety of outlets in over 30 languages. You can choose where you want to tune in from, and they have that list here. It is going to be live on YouTube, Twitch, Twitch TV, uh, Twitter.com, Facebook, and, and TikTok on top of that. And, of course, they will kick off uh, the festivities on Sunday, June 12th at 10 a.m. Pacific time, which will be 1 p.m. our time here in New York. Asa, this is this is big news. This is this is great, a great way to open up the show. Obviously, we we knew that the event was coming, right? This is not a surprise. You know, mm-hmm. they do it every year. But with that said, um, listen, uh, last year's show, which I've watched multiple times, my first run through, I gave it a 9.5. And then after watching it, I had I, I had no choice but to give it a 10, only because it was th- probably the best show that they have ever put on in the existence of the brand. I got to be honest with you. I mean, with what we know that they have coming out, what we think they have coming out, and what surprises they're going to show us, this very well could be another 10 out of 10 show. What are your expectations for this? <laughs> first of all, first of all, I'm really glad that they are taking up the mantle and putting on a massive show because I, I love those shows. I loved E3 when it was running well. Um, last yeah. year's E3 obviously was partially a disaster, and Xbox and Devolver Digital stepped up with the like pretty much the only shows that were worth watching, and they were they were good shows. But this year, E3 is obviously not happening in any format at all. Xbox don't need the event they're going to put it on for us all anyway and that's incredible we know they've got 34 studios plus we know that all of those studios are working on games and you see things like oh big news a studio's working on a game give us more because we know they're all working on games most of them are working on multiple games and we're finally going to see some of them there's the big ones that we know about obviously things like avowed are likely to be there and ready forza motorsport is likely to be there ready polished pristine gameplay and i'm expecting that one to blow us away 
and there's surprises and they're getting the partners in and there's just there's there's so much so and it's um it's a nice culmination xbox have been relatively quiet for the last uh, i don't know i don't count the weeks but they've been a little bit quiet yeah. mm -hmm. and you can expect them to stay relatively quiet building up the hype for this event coming up but then boom there's going to be there's going to be i'm not saying your name there i'm saying yeah, boom, yeah, like bang, it's an explosion you know <laughs> um <laughs> it's going to be a massive event yeah you know what it, it's 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 hard to imagine but at the same time not really uh, when you think about what they were able to accomplish last year, I mean, there was it's it's hard to even suggest, Asa, that there was another entity, whether that be a studio or a group of studios or a publisher that even remotely came close to what Xbox delivered. I mean, they literally saved E3 last year that that that's that's been said. I'm not the first person to say that that is a complete fact. Um, and uh what what's interesting is that they literally have so many games in development very much to what you were saying and, and a lot that we know but there are a lot of games that we've only heard code names i mean quite a few of them a list as long as my arm um are we gonna see indiana jones well i heard from uh, from someone that it's a lot for you know a good friend of the show skullsy who was actually on skullsy tv who was on uh, the Xbox Factor podcast on Tuesday said that um, Indiana Jones is much further uh, along than a lot of people think. Now, of course, it's a Todd Howard uh, run game. So you would imagine that we're not going to get a release date or even see much of it until it's ready to go. Usually that's his MO is six months before. Boom, snap a finger. Here's a release date. Here's a collector's edition. Go crazy. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But. You know, you, you said a couple of big ones there. Avowed. I expect to see something from Avowed, right? I expect Motorsport to be there because it, sh it should, by all rights, be releasing this year. You know, we've been hearing about Compulsion's game, right? Set in a fantasy world that's supposed to be like a Bioshock meets Uncharted. And one of, one of which, Phil Spencer said, it's his most anticipated game that he hasn't shown yet. He talked about that in, in an interview. And this is a team, a very unknown team, that only has We Happy Few as its front man. And now we're going to get a chance to potentially see something on a huge level. You know, they 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 were a double-A team. Now they have a triple-A budget, and they've hired some triple-A talent. So I would imagine that's something that we could see. Um the, 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 the whiteboard is empty. Uh, I'm, I'm expecting at least uh, 15 of their big first party titles, not just what's coming this year, Asa, but what's coming potentially in what may is what, what a lot of people in this community are chalking up to be the the biggest year in Xbox gaming next year in 2023. Um, how many how many of the how many of the, the, the first party showings are you expecting? Oh, lots. I'm not going to put a, a number on it. It's quite um, interesting you mentioned, actually, that there'll be games coming soon and games going into next year. And I've always... I don't necessarily like the games that are too far out. Mm -hmm. Even even the big bits of CGI. And I understand the need for them. It's, they need to have some control over revealing these games rather than wait until it leaks. So I understand if you're going to start recruiting for positions and all the rest of it, you, you're going to need to tell the world something. And a CGI trailer is better than a job listing. So I get it. <laughs> but I want E3 to, to really focus. I mean, it's fair to say that Microsoft have been relatively sparse in their Xbox releases, their first party releases. We know that they've been building up these studios. We know, obviously, a lot of people attribute the Bethesda games to them. Rightly so, attribute the Bethesda games that came out on the PlayStation to Xbox Studios. They are Xbox Studios, but people playing on Xbox haven't felt those benefits yet. Yeah. Um, and this is the last dry spell that they will ever have. Like It has to be. They've got so many studios that there's no excuses after this year, and I don't expect that they'll need them. So how far out would i like the furthest games to be i guess i can accept some for next year but i'm mostly interested in what they've got coming this year <laughs> yeah you know and again see that's the thing that's very interesting uh a lot of people a lot of you know uh, uh, and both sides of the community and you know the of course the toxic ones that are the most loudest but they're the probably smallest of the community have been asking hey microsoft you know the first half of the year super light right but you know what's what's been saving them is xbox game pass I mean, they they just announced that the new tennis game is coming in July. Uh, um, 
Aaron Greenberg tweeted that uh, the NBA, uh, NBA 2K22 available today in Xbox Game Pass, which is awesome. Uh, they, they all of May's games, uh, which is uh, Trek to Yomi's, the it leads the, the 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 pack on that is just spectacular. Uh, you know, there are some rumors floating around that Evil Dead might get announced as an, a day and date that they're kind of holding back on that. And it makes sense because it's a budgeted title, right? But at the same time, it's a title that needs players to survive, right? And what better place than 30 million in Xbox Game Pass than to get your players? Um, so I can see a bag of money being dropped on that. And, I, I, and they can hold that to the vest right up until launch and just surprise us which is what they're normally doing so for the first half of the year it's it has been saved by xbox game pass because they are dropping tons and tons of games to populate the xbox uh player base and that's awesome but we also forget asa that the second half of the year looks to be pretty stacked i mean listen if redfall stays where it is and we've heard some rumors it may move from the summer to the fall and it may come out in december we don't know because they're not talking about it but I have completely faith. I have complete faith in that studio. Uh, they've only they, everything they've ever ever done has only been great, right? So you have Redfall, you have Motorsport, which is expected. Uh, people keep forgetting about Deathloop. Apparently, Deathloop doesn't matter to a lot of people, but it should because it was a, of a game of the year contender last year, and it's finally coming to Xbox. And of course, you can't you cannot discount or remove from the conversation that Starfield is in fact the biggest game of the year as an Xbox and PC exclusive. That that particular game, from what we're hearing, is going to be not only the biggest game Todd Howard has ever produced, it is being spoken about to be one of the biggest, most robust, polished games Bethesda Studios has ever done. So much so that it just gave me goosebumps saying that. So when you talk about the second half of the year, if it's just those four titles, you're talking about a banger of a year. But you know, uh, you know, uh, a good friend of the show, Boxenberger, and I seem to think Wolfenstein is this year. Wolfenstein three. That's been in development for quite some time. You also um, have potentially, and again, this is just a rumor and, and my personal theory, Compulsion's game. They've been working on that game for years. Who's to say that isn't one of those surprises? That hey, we're showing it and it comes out in three months. Right? We don't we don't know that. So there, there we do know that there will be a surprise or three. And on, on top of the four games that we have a good a good strong suspicion uh, are going to come out. Um, and then of course, if you can then sell us next year with some release dates. You know when when is Avowed coming out? When is Fable coming out? You know how 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 long how how far along is Fable? Right? That's they've been, they've been working on that for years. Uh, when is Hellblade two? You know, when is Project Mara? I mean, I can go on and on and on. Um, so is, is that so so you don't really want to see outside of 23? 23. 23 is probably as far as I'd like to see. And I think they've got enough to keep everybody sated. Yeah. If they, I, I, if they I focus agree. on those games. It's yeah, interesting. I mean, um, you mentioned Starfield there and, and you used the word polished. I'll always be disappointed if Starfield comes out and feels polished. That's not a Bethesda game. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You're expecting I little was, quippy bugs for it to be. I was a, playing a Skyrim game. like a week or two ago, and I got stuck on the tutorial because it was like go through the house, and I couldn't because the house had walls. And I reloaded it, and the next time around, the dragon knocked the walls down, and it was fine. But it's like ah, Bethesda, Starfield. <laughs> the bugs are part and parcel with the ambition. So Starfield can't come out polished. It's going to be well, a beautiful you know, it's, train wreck. It's, it, it, it's funny. It, it, it's it's funny because I'm sure there are going to be a lot of memes uh, once this game does come out. I mean, one of the things that's interesting about Starfield specifically, Asa, is the fact that this game was supposed to release last year. And for better or worse, because we don't know, because we haven't seen what the game looks like or haven't played the game, this could potentially uh, get uh, the, the Halo effect. And, and, and what do I mean? I've, I've said that on the show numerous times. Halo Infinite, when it was first shown in 2020 in July, left a lot of people feeling disappointed, right? Um, and then they they said, okay, well, listen, you know, we have to, we, we, we can't launch this with the system because the game needs to go back into the oven and cook. And what did we wind up getting? Well, listen, regardless of how many, whether you love Halo, hate Halo, or whatever, I, I gave it a 10 out of 10. I, th I think it was absolutely stunning what they did, both in multiplayer 
and in single player. Now, granted, yeah, are we are we are we dealing with some issues regarding content for multiplayer? Yes, they're well documented and they're well and they've been responding, and we know what's coming. It's a free to play game. These kind of these kind of trials and tribulations they happen. I, I'm willing to wait. Season two is around the corner, and I'm going to be paying my ten bucks and getting jumping right into it. Um, but it's if if it gets twelve months of polish, the same way, and, and Halo got more than twelve months. But if it's, it gets a year worth of polish from its original release date to to eleven eleven twenty two, this I, I I have extremely high hopes. And I and I can't wait to see what it's like traveling the galaxy, finding new factions and new religions and new monsters and creatures to fight. It, it it's it's going to be a game. I, like I said, I I don't think there is a game that released this year that's going to be bigger than this game. Bigger in what metric? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, <laughs> certainly the biggest RPG. I mean, you know, I mean, again, I'm, I'm, I'm nearly 200 hours into uh, Elden Ring, which, which I didn't think, I never thought I was that would ever happen to me. But I, I, I think the only, the only game that could potentially knock that out of what I consider to be game of the year this year is going to be what Starfield delivers. And if Starfield is your typical uh, Bethesda RPG romp that I love. And you just pack on a new IP, and you pack on polish, and you pack on this wide world to to, to check out. It, it 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 could get knocked out, but I, I'm I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, anything anything you'd like to add to expectations for the show that was just announced before we move on to like the big topic of the day? Oh, I see lots of people saying Avowed, and I'm a big fan of Obsidian, so I'm really yeah. looking forward to to Avowed, even though that that might. I don't know. Is that 2023? I hope so. Yeah, really hope yeah. so. Um, and I've said before about Turn 10, so we've already mentioned Forza Motorsport. Um, that Turn 10 are not just a racing studio. They make racing games, but they're a, an absolute pinnacle studio for Microsoft in terms of their technical prowess. I call them an incubator studio because everything, every new technology that Microsoft demonstrates, so they've got their direct ML upscaling, they've got their ray tracing, they've got whatever else they're, they're doing. It's always turn 10 first and foremost. Coalition side by side. Yeah. Making products with it, but turn 10 are an incubator studio for technology. So if you want to see what your Series X and your Series S can do, keep a real close eye on that studio. Um, yeah. Excited for that. Yeah, I, I, I think what we're going to get is something going to be absolutely incredibly special, uh, especially with motorsport. I mean, that game has been in development for many years. We know it's going to be the new engine that they're running. I, I can't wait to see that. We know that they've reworked the whole game uh, where it's actually going to have a campaign, which is amazing. I can't wait to see what they what 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 turn ten delivers, and uh, hopefully that that in fact is this year. But before we move on to the next topic, let me catch up with some of the super chats. First of all, Jacob Novick drops an outstanding two dollars super chat and says, "Rumor, Zenimax has a Mandalorian MMO in the works." Yeah, we're going to be talking about that on Primetime Gaming. I'm trying to get some more behind the scenes info on that. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that Scolzi TV actually dropped a video and was on Twitter regarding that. And uh, it, it looks like, he, like I said, he, he publicly said that gamers, Xbox gamers, are going to be incredibly surprised by how many licensed IPs Bethesda is working on. And one of which is supposed to be a Marvel IP, which has me giddy because I've been banging the Marvel drum for years. Um, sorry for my driving. This this car. Oh, this, how did you do that, dude? It was it's <laughs> it was really it was very hard to drive. Terrible, just terrible. And my skills are not that terrible, but th this car is for sure. Uh, Sir X Men dropped an outstanding two dollars super chat and says, "Boom, glad you like the tennis video for Game Pass." Yeah, I, I'm gonna play that. I, I like tennis, uh, and I would not mind. I mean, a day and day for Game Pass. Yes, please. Um. And Jacob Novak just uh, repeat uh, actually drops an additional two dollars super chat and says and a rumored Marvel PvPVE game, and I say once again yes please. Uh, but listen, we got to talk about numbers because it's one of the metrics that were used last gen to basically start and stop any conversation you had when it came to Xbox versus Sony. 
There, listen, I'm not going to sit here and suggest for a second, Asa, that Microsoft did not get curb stomped last gen because they did. Uh, now, listen, two to one, may, you know, maybe that's not so terrible, uh, but it's probably closer to almost three to one after it's all said and done. Uh, and Microsoft, you know, unfortunately, they shot themselves in the foot in 2013, and it took a long time for Phil to turn this massive ship around. And towards the end, you know, Xbox has become a brand uh, of what they did closing out last gen to start this gen, why it's so popular. We're going to get into those those particular numbers. And uh, we have a lot of people that were reporting on this. Um, and one of the things I want to talk about, and, and, and you know, I, I know that I'm probably going to get some pushback from people that are more pro Sony than they are Xbox, but like we were talking about it in the green room, Asa, I, I think there's a seismic shift happening here. And the, 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 the term market leader, I don't think that's going to go to Sony this gen. As a matter of fact, and again, tune in tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern standard time, where we're going to be giving Sony the business. Uh, folks, they continue to step on their own. You know what? Uh, every time they uh, get an opportunity to, you know, Microsoft isn't talking. Microsoft is quiet. Microsoft is like literally walking on eggshells right now because of the Activision Blizzard deal. They don't want to really make any waves. They kind of want this thing to get done. And they haven't been talking. We got some news today, which is what we're going to be talking about. But every chance Sony gets, they shoot themselves in the foot. Uh, obviously, we saw the report from Kotaku regarding them forcing developers uh, who produce games that cost more than $39 for two-hour demos with no money on the back end of, uh, of adding these demos. Uh, that's the Again, that's the report from Kotaku. We're going to talk about that. And, of course, now we heard um, something that was, I think, to be unbelievably gross which we're going to get into more tomorrow morning is how if you're an xbox fan uh, you can stack uh your game pass uh subscriptions up to three years into your heart's content well not so much with sony they are blocking anyone stacking basically if you have three years worth well you're gonna have to you, you know you can't stack them it's one year and 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 uh and, and too bad for you which i think is gross um I don't understand how Sony is, is trying to be known as for the players. It's more like for the payers. And anyone that defends this rhetoric of what Sony has been up to, you need to get your head examined for sure. But let's re let's rewind this. Let's get this back on track. You love your rewind button. Go on then. Yeah, yeah, go there you go. Hit that yes. rewind button. <laughs> I, I hit it so many times. It's, you're you're going to be very mad at me by the end of the show for sure. But let, let, let's talk about uh, how Xbox and Microsoft's outstanding uh, qu uh, quarter three for 2022 looks like. And here is here are some of the numbers. Uh, and this one comes to us first from Benji Sales, who is a good friend of this program, good friend of the community. Uh, gaming revenue went, grew 6%. Content and services grew 4% compared to a strong prior year, thanks to Xbox Game Pass growth and first-party titles. Xbox hardware revenue is huge, Asa. It's up 14% driven by the continued demand of Xbox Series X and S. Now we have Matt Piscatella, good friend of the community, reporting that Xbox unit and dollar sales in March 2022 set a new all-time March high for the platform, and they're beating their previous bests set in March of 2011 and, uh, and March of 2014, where they in 2011, they had the highest units sold. And in 2014, 2014 in March, were dollars made based on the console. This particular report is they beat both of those. And, and that's huge um, for Xbox. Um, and uh, let, let's talk about the uh, big gains in cloud computers and specifically Xbox. Revenue, uh, ladies and gentlemen, was up 49.4 billion, and it, with a B, and increased 18%. Net income was 16.7 billion, and increased 8% according to the GAAP. It's up 13% non-GAAP. Revenue and productivity and business process 
was $15.8 billion with a B. Revenue in intelligent cloud was $19.1 billion and increased 26%. And revenue in more personal computing was fifteen uh, was $14.5 billion and increased 11%. And that comes to us from good friend of this program, Brad Sams. Now, Asa, I got it. You know, listen, it's great that Microsoft as a company is doing great in, in computers and, of course, in cloud and in, you know and everything else but we're here to talk about xbox and one of the things that um there were concerns on whether or not 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 only could microsoft be competitive this gen which they're proving time and time again that they are um with the, with the two, the two pieces of hardware but both of the hardware that is not currently available readily for the playstation fan base that is still having problems getting it to market um you could logistically go and find the Series S anywhere, Asa. But more so, I'm starting to see places actually have Xbox Series X. Now, that was a report that they, quote-unquote, paid more for chip priority. And whether that's true or not, well, you know, my pop used to say, Craig, you know, you have to spend money to make money, son. So they're spending money, and they are making money. Perfect example with all of the, the gains across the board. How impressed are you with what Microsoft is doing as a whole, but more importantly, what Xbox continues to do in the marketplace? I, I'm going to just quickly ask you a question before that. Sure. E excluding right now, what was your favorite period of Xbox? I, I would have to say that it was the Xbox 360 by, by leaps and bounds. And, and, and I say that to say um, one of the things that immediately jumps off the page for me is the third-party exclusive games like the Mass Effects that they wind up being able to, to get and how they just dominated with content. I mean, they're, they're actually, my favorite time in Xbox 360 uh, history, uh, Asa, if you want me to really uh, go deep into this, is the Summer of Arcade. Like that period, uh, I think it was a seven-year block was my absolute favorite. I was devastated when they took that away. Uh, I, I really wish they would bring that back because some of the best games, the indie games I've ever played came out of that era. Nice. That's that's awesome. That's kind of what I expected. For me, it was um, it was definitely the first two or three years of the 360 when yep. they had, like you say, they were third party, but the industry was a bit different back then. But you had the mm -hmm. likes of Mass Effect and Bioshock and Gears from all of their partners that were unbelievably well received one after the other after the other until two human came about and kind of bucked the trend but um <laughs> remember that well but i do it was, it was do. a good time right? I, actually As an Xbox fan. I actually quite enjoyed two human i know i may be one of the few people but two, two human had everything going for it like the concept was fantastic but yeah we won't, we won't do two human deep dive um i'm sure there's not too many people that want to hear that right now so um but yeah that was all positive right and everything that they were doing the media loved and right now, you can say that they've, they've recaptured that. The media is on their side. Remember, I can't remember if it was a week or two weeks ago, there was a story about this advertising program that they're building. And the story that ran through media outlets everywhere was that they're building this thing to put adverts in free-to-play games. Do you remember that? Yes. Yep. See, I'm not saying this to be critical of it, but what's really interesting is the article that all of that was based on, the Business Insider article, it was like hidden behind a paywall. But the article didn't mention free-to-play games anywhere. No, it did all. not. It, it made you believe that when you're that you're playing the next Halo DLC, you're going to get a Taco Bell commercial, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the thing that's interesting about that is that's not how the media ran with it. The media inserted this free to play thing, and it's almost like mitigating any potential negatives. And if you imagine how things were at the start of the Xbox One era, if this same story had broken at the start of the Xbox One era, when having a Connect meant that Microsoft were spying on you and all the rest of it, yeah. It would have been so, it would have blown up in such a different way. Yeah, and now 100%. through through good work from Microsoft, through initiatives like Game Pass that everybody is on board with and loving at the moment, through building all these studios, putting out games, their their hardware strategy, I'm sure we'll come back to in a minute, because obviously there's there's some things to talk about on the Series X and the Series S, but they just built such positive sentiment and the community is celebrating all the time. The Xbox community is a happy community all yep. of the time. Like they just are. You can feel it in all of the podcasts that we go around. 
and it's paying off and it's hard to see them faltering from this point forwards because everybody is on their side they're making the correct decisions phil spencer sarah bond they all seem genuinely nice people as well which is, is shouldn't matter too much in, in business but it makes well, it harder to helps. see them tripping I mean, up right <laughs> one of the things that i love about xbox is how front facing they are with the community like I i've had conversations on twitter with sarah bond i mean like really like i i honestly can't believe that you know i i've i've, I've been able to dm jason ronald on an issue that i had and he responded um, I, I, you know, I, 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 I had Larry Herb on the show in 2019 that Microsoft reached out to me. No, you don't see that in the Sony camp. You haven't seen that kind of community interaction uh, since they basically took put, take took shoe and put him somewhere where we don't ever hear from him. And the likes of Jack, uh, Jack Trenton and 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 the early, uh, you know, the early crew are no longer a part of uh, of Sony. And it's one of the things that I love about the company that they are on social media talking to us. It's very important to do. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, and then, like I mentioned, the hardware then, the Series S. So I think part of the goodwill and things that Microsoft have done, some of the good things that they've done, you could consider gambles. Even the obvious ones that we see paying off, Game Pass yeah. was a massive gamble. And they're learning about that as they go along. They're, they're, they're finding that people are spending more, but they wouldn't have known that going into it. And they would have had some difficult boardroom discussions to convince themselves that this was the right way forwards. Game Pass was a gamble. Xbox Series S was not a gamble. Don't like, it's a safe bet. It's a fantastic bet. And it's paying off big time for them with hardware numbers. The availability of it combined with all of their services and things. And the way that they've, I actually really like that console that, um, that they focused on exactly the right areas to, to deliver a cheap console without holding back anybody. Yeah. And so that's not a gamble. That's smart. Um, yeah. And then, I mean, you mentioned a seismic shift in who's the industry leader. I think um, I, Phil Spencer said this, so I'm not like claiming it as my own, but I think he's absolutely right that there is room for lots of people to thrive and survive. Sony's big problem with Xbox at the moment is I don't, I don't think Phil is harboring any malicious intent, intent towards Sony. I don't think he's trying to crush them or anything along those lines. I think there's room for Sony to grow and thrive. But Sony's current model is, is a traditional console model, and they need people to be playing third-party games on that system. The big risk to them is that they end up collateral damage if people move their third-party habits over to Xbox on account of all the services and things. Sony are going to sell consoles and they're going to sell their exclusives, but... If everyone's friends are playing the third parties on the Xbox, they are going to need to adjust. Well, listen, I, I've said this before, and again, this is this is not taking a shot of a, at PlayStation, right? I, I have a PS5. I have F everything. I have a second controller. I got the headphones. I got the charger. I got a, a 20 games. So I, I, I'm in it. I'm in it to win it for, for Sony. But you said something really interesting. You said, what if the third parties move over to Xbox? What, what, what if that becomes a thing? Because we saw that, Asa. Uh, in the 360 era, third-party dominance was Xbox. And then they kind of shot themselves in the foot with TV, 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 TV. This is how you share games, DM, uh, DRM. You know, it, 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 just, it, it, it just was one stumble after another, which is what we're seeing Sony do right now. Uh, Sony is about to launch in June their so-called Game Pass killer known as PlayStation Plus, and we know that premium is $18, which is $3 more a month, which is, you know, ridiculous. Uh, we just got some uh, some news yesterday about them forcing uh, devs to make demos uh, that they're not going to be uh, getting any money for. Again, that, that's reported at Kotaku, and we're going to talk about that tomorrow morning. Um, and they just, they, they continue to stumble. Um, and when you look at what Microsoft is doing in, in the big picture, um, they're in trouble. I, I, I will I will come out and say Sony knows they're in trouble. Um, and, I, and I say it for one game, Call of Duty. Call of Duty is locked up behind the contract that Microsoft is going to honor next year and the following year, 2023, 2024. 2023, there's no Call of Duty. Right? We know that for a fact that they've already said, hey, we're taking a year off and we're going to give our devs a, a, a chance to breathe. They've been in the salt mines of Call of Duty, all of them. 
and they got to they got they got to get them, themselves together. Which I would imagine there's going to be some restructuring, and you're going to see people like Toys for Bob actually do games that they're good at, right? Not Call of Duty. Um, and in 2024, it's the last year that Sony will be able to market that game, and that's fine. And I think what we're seeing is Microsoft is 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 playing the long game here. Uh, and I said this before. Um, just imagine for a second, Asa, that not this year, the next year, or even in 2024, when a Series S is 200 bucks, and on that box art is play Call of Duty first here, right? Uh, you get all the map packs, everything else for free. You know, you get all of this in Xbox Game Pass. Oh, and by the way, we have a perk system. You can get, you know, your different color guns you can get your different equipment that you can you know your scopes and stuff i think when that happens and call of duty even if it stays multiplayer i know this is a big fight this big tug of war oh, make it exclusive f sony they don't want to f sony they want sony's money they're going to take 70 percent of that sony's going to get their 30 sure but just you know the, the it, call of duty is going to sell to sony players but i'm telling you this right now asa when Call of Duty is an Xbox Game Pass, it is the, the, those players that you were just talking about that you know Sony might be worried will move over to where Xbox is are going to move over to where Xbox is, and Sony's in trouble. Uh, Sony's in trouble in a lot of ways. Their Game Pass killer is garbage. It's launching and it's a hot pile of garbage. It offers nothing to a, a forty-year gamer like myself. I find it so uh, unappealing. I wouldn't take it for five dollars a month. Their maximum package. I could care less about demos. I can care less about playing games that are not going to have any upgrades in visuals or frame rate. They're literally going to be. I'm playing Twisted Metal One, tw Twisted Metal One from hundred years ago. Do I care? No, actually, I don't. Um, so I think I think that when you look at overall, the sleeping giant known as Microsoft has now been awakened, and that loss. That devastating curb stomp loss they took during the Xbox One era, well, now we're seeing it come to fruition. And that 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 same turnaround where you saw uh, Microsoft go from first to worst is happening. It's happening right now in front of us. And if, if E3 is anything that we are already expecting, like we talked about in topic one, Sony is in massive trouble only because... We have no idea what happens after God of War. Outside of Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine, we know nothing. But we know a lot of what Microsoft is is, is putting down. Um, before I get your response to that, and I know I, I, I went crazy on that rant. Uh, <laughs> Eternal Shaddai is a new channel member, brother. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. It's, these, it's the channel members and, of course, the Super Chats that come in that allow us to do all the giveaways. And we have three more big ones. And it's going to run us, uh, between the next three, about two grand. Uh, the, the one in, uh, in December is going to be about $1,000. And we're going to try and do 500 per next big ones. Uh, in July and September. So yeah, so that that's we we pay we 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 actually you know fund the giveaways through the super chats and a channel membership. So if you want to help support that, become a channel member and of course drop a super chat every now and again. But Asa, I said a lot. There's a lot to get into what I said. Please by all means try and break it down. And I hope I didn't lose you on my ridiculous rant. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to remember that's the beginning of it. Right. Right. So you mentioned um, the contrast or the similarities between um, Sony this generation and Xbox last generation. You said that Sony are stumbling through everything and shooting themselves in the foot as they go. There's one really key difference between Xbox One and what, what PlayStation are doing right now. And that's that when Xbox was stumbling last generation, it was because they were trying to force change. Yep. Sony's is kind of the opposite. They're trying to resist change. Yeah. So the point, things that... Dude. Yeah, but the things that Sony are doing that, that are perceived as mistakes, if, if Xbox weren't around doing what they're doing, actually Sony would look fine. And this this is true of lots of things like um, things that we're, we're used to now because Microsoft have pushed them on us. Smart delivery, for example, back compat, all of those kinds of things. There wasn't actually a huge number of people, especially smart delivery. Nobody was asking for smart delivery. Nobody even considered smart delivery as an Xbox fan. Do you remember that it. people laughed at them when they did that? People mm, laugh at I that. Sure do. 
Yeah. And but the thing with that though is not having smart delivery, if Microsoft hadn't done it, it's what people were used to. Yeah. Even on Xbox consoles, like if you bought Forza Horizon 2 on the Xbox 360, you had to buy it again to play it on the Xbox One. That was normal. Nobody complained. It was fine. And Microsoft have done that. I'm not going to say out of the goodness of their heart, because obviously that's not how corporations work, but they've done it for us without us even asking for it. And yeah. Sony looked bad by comparison. It's not because Sony, exception being the £70 game, $70 games, that's that's entirely on them. They've gone and done that to themselves. Yeah. But most things that they're doing, they're carrying on with what has worked for them in the past. And they're just being made to look bad by things that Microsoft are improving over time. So that's a difference there. I don't think Sony is all doom and gloom. Um, there are there are other audiences as well. So you look at Nintendo and Nintendo are very resilient to everything that Microsoft are doing and Sony can get there. And I think um, a lot of people expect them to go toe to toe with Microsoft while simultaneously acknowledging that maybe they can't go toe to toe with Microsoft, right? But they're not necessarily equipped to do what Microsoft are doing. Um, my kids play, I've got them, um, they're on Xbox and they've got Game Pass and trying to get them to play a game from Game Pass is like trying to force them to eat their vegetables. They will not do it. I'm like, you've got, you've both got access to this library of over 400 games, and you're telling me that you're bored and asking for Fortnite skins. Please, when if I was, if I was like you, if I had access to these games at your age, oh my goodness, ah, oh, like I'm sure it would just be like, ah, oh, I don't know, I can't even imagine that much joy. But they just don't touch it. There is a massive industry for games like Roblox and Fortnite and things like that. So, yeah. so there's opportunity for Sony to go in other directions and still be okay, is all I'm saying there. Um, I don't think they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Microsoft on the Game Pass and services front. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, one of the things that I think they're going to be forced to do, and again, I, I don't know if this is going to happen. I think it would, be, it would be a positive step is to get their games to release day and date uh, in PC, meaning not not for free, not not a Game Pass thing. Allow the PC audience to purchase your games. And again, you you said something really interesting. Is they're fighting change, and I have had a talk with many people on my podcast, and we talk on the phone all the time. And a lot of people believe that Jim Ryan, dancing Jim Ryan, right, uh, is not really to blame for a lot of the stumbling blocks that they are that we're currently seeing uh some people believe that he is literally fighting or ice skating uphill if you will against old school japan sony that does not want to move into the future they want to release big budgeted games they want them to be you know these these million sellers and they want to charge and and they don't want to give back and I mean, again, I, I can't I can't say that I a thousand percent agree with that. I think Jim Ryan is, uh, a, you know, holds a relatively very high position. And I think that he's, I mean, he's a proven winner when it comes to business. All you have to do is look what he did in Europe, in in the UK and in the EU during the, 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 the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 generation. It was six to one in that in that region, six to one, even some places eight to one. So he knows a thing or three. Jim Ryan is not a boob. He knows how to make money. But it, 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 it's, you know, I bring up the, I bring it up and I pose that question to you. Could could potentially, and again, this is speculation town, folks. Could that be what they're really fighting? That's um it's difficult to put names to it. I have heard a lot of conversations that there are kind of boardroom arguments about which direction they should be pushing there. I don't actually know which side of it Jim Ryan is arguing for. Mm, and he's got a difficult job to do. It's a difficult industry to navigate because change is happening right now. And you mentioned there Sony putting their own games day and date on PC, never mind subscription services, both conversations that, that everybody is speculating on. For me, the PC one in particular will happen when they've lost that third party market we were talking about earlier. The two things are very much connected. So at the moment, and this is an Xbox show, I don't want to talk too much PlayStation, but PlayStation is very much the traditional console model where they are making these exclusives specifically because they want you in their ecosystem playing those third-party games. Yep. They serve more more of a purpose than just being good games. Um, if they lose that third-party audience anyway, there's no reason not to sell those games day and date 
on PC. So the two things very much connected for me. Yeah, yeah I mean, listen, I, I listen. If they would have said we're charging you twenty bucks per month or an you know X amount of dollars per year to get Sony games day and date. I, I know that it would be it would be five dollars more, and I'm not suggesting that it, it that it should be uh, because I I'm not I don't like I didn't buy Gran Turismo. I, I I'm glad I didn't. That wound up being just a complete disaster. And of course, the microtransactions thing was just a, a PR nightmare for them, which continues. Um, I would have at least attempted to play the game if I was paying for the monthly subscription like I'm doing. Uh, for uh, for you know for Xbox Game Pass, can they do it? Well, I mean, it's it's you know you you really could come at this from two sides of the coin. A lot of people think that they can't. I I, I unbelievably disagree, and and I say that because you know everyone talks about Sony's bangers, and they should. By all rights, they should. They they are a conversation. Their games are phenomenal. The polish that goes into these games. Folks, you, you may hate me for this. It's literally second to none. Their games normally come out unbelievably pristine, which is what disappointed me so much about Horizon Forbidden West. It's a, still even a buggy mess to this day. It's ridiculous how many bugs that game launched with. And that's and that's very disappointing because that's that's unlike Sony. Um, but if you if you look at the numbers, they only have four games that made over 20 million. In, in, in sales, only four out of all of the bangers that they have, only four of them. Now, I have a strong suspicion, and again, this is my personal belief that if they had a yearly uh, paid uh, Game Pass esque kind of service or a monthly service, they would get people to come over and spend the money because they would, I mean, listen. I mean, I know I see a lot of people support the devs, support the devs, pay pay, pay the seventy six forty three here in New York for a game. Uh, no, because you can get four months of a game pass for that. That uh, over four months, almost five months for that matter. Um, I think that they could move uh, the the casual audience who has grown to know what services are thanks to Netflix and Hulu and Paramount Plus and and Disney Plus you know the 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 the, the normie as i like to call them right the casual person they know about services and if they were a sony fan and they only bought two or three games per year which is what the what 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 the casual gamer is normally uh, buying they would subscribe to a 15 or 20 dollar a month because they can play their the latest sony banger and then whatever else Sony put in there. I, I again, I, I'm I still think it's a missed opportunity for Sony. Uh, and and not and I'll say this. I'll even take it even further. Not doing uh, uh, PC and console day and day at the same time for their biggest games is just it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Did you remember earlier you mentioned? Um... The Microsoft Kart game being a missed opportunity, and I said it's not missed. It's open. They can still yeah. do it. Yeah. Not a missed opportunity. Like there's nothing to stop them. They can turn on a dime on that if they weigh it up and decide it's the way forwards. Um I mean, listen, Jim, Jim, uh, Jim Ryan left from he said, you know, the market right now says this, but we at some point could always change. So he he left the door cracked open that a, a, in a year from now when this because I, I don't think this is gonna hit. What what I mean, what 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 they're going to do is they're going to move people over to a tier and they're going to say, we have 60 million people in this new tier when it's, it's, it's not new people, not new subscribers. I mean, you know, I mean, Xbox could do that easily by moving everyone that's just live gold. And, and this, there is a, a large a subset of community that can simply just be like, okay, listen, live gold, no more. Um, it's Game Pass. It's $10 a month for console only. Same thing you're paying for, um, you know, with, 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 you know, gold right now. Right. So, I mean, it, 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 that that's, that's going to be the trickery that goes on. Um, now we are at the 60 minute mark, which we usually do these shows for an hour. Uh, I do have another topic in it loaded and ready to go. If you have the time to be here, I've you know. got the time. I'm having a good time. Let's carry it on. Okay. So <laughs> listen, we, 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 we got to get into, Activision Blizzard, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is a topic 
that will just not die. Um, and it's not going to die until the deal is done. And the deal is going to get done. But we got to bring up Jason Schreier. And I think you guys over at Games on Daily know him well because you've whooped his ass cowboy style <laughs> numerous times. And uh, live on the air, which has been some of the best work <laughs> that Gaz has ever done. Uh, and and it's and again, folks, they didn't really beat up Jason Schreier. It's a, it's a fictional lookalike, but man, he does look like him. It's crazy. Um, but listen, let, let, let's get into uh, uh, what he had to say. And um, Richard Hogue, uh, I think you I think you may know him. He's a friend yeah. of this program. Rich is a good dude. Rich knows his stuff. Um, well, it was posted. Uh, by Jason Schreier, that uh, Wall Street, right, here in New York, believes the Activision Blizzard deal is going to fail. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and they're saying that because right now uh, the Activision Blizzard stock is trading well below what Microsoft is paying. Which I believe is uh, if it's eighty six dollars or closer to closer to ninety dollars per share is a cash is what they're going to do, um, and uh, the story comes out of Bloomberg, which of course I believe was let me see who let me see who wrote this is if this is uh, uh, Jason Trier wrote wrote the article uh, was posted this morning at nine a.m. Uh, was also uh, 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 contributed uh, by uh, Brody Ford. Of of, um, of of Bloomberg, and uh, basically um, they're reporting that shares of the gaming juggernaut are trading twenty five percent lower uh, than Microsoft's ninety five dollar order or, or offer. So I I, I, I low bold it, folks. They're actually paying ninety five dollars per share, um, and uh, according to this report. Um, there it's not, it, according to Jason Schreier specifically, who we know hates Xbox. Uh, he, if you are an Xbox fan, he probably has you blocked. He blocked me a couple of years ago because I called him a pompous ass for one of his comments. And I'm not too far from the truth. I could get more graphic, but this is a PG 13 show. So I'm not going to really tell you how I feel about his shenanigans. Needless to say, not on, not not on the top of the Christmas list. Let's just say that. But Richard Hogue, and again, we love Rich. The guy just is packed, packed with knowledge when it comes to this type of discussion. Uh, if you're not a fan or you're not subscribed to Richard Hogue, uh, you definitely should ha- get over to Hogue Law on YouTube and subscribe. I mean, his his playlists are as long as my arm, and uh, he really does give us the information. Well, he tweeted this, ladies and gentlemen, and pardon my French. He says, there is no indication that Wall Street believes the deal will fail. Activision, Microsoft Activision is trending at 70-30 from the marketplace with, with, uh, with, W slash A year plus of time value of money discounts in an in infl- in, in, inflammatory uh, inflation. I'm sorry. Environment also is incorporated into the conversation. And this is what he said. Complete, unmitigated bullshit. Again, pardon my French. And that's coming directly from Hoaglaw's official Twitter account. Uh, again, we have seen multiple times, Asa how uh he goes about doing his business he's a sl- he's very slimy uh I, I that's all i'll say about him he's not a good dude i think he is probably the worst of the worst when you talk about uh degenerate uh journalists i i don't i understand he has broken some big stories but he's not a nice guy he's about selling his books and he could care less about the collateral damage that comes in the story that he drops he could care absolute less and that's disgusting um, and we know that he has an absolute distaste for Microsoft. He's had an absolute distaste for this deal since it was announced publicly, and I'm sure privately. Um, let, let's get to what uh, the, 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 I mean, right now, folks, the board is voting today on whether or not to accept this deal. It is likely that the deal is going to go through because of how much money 
each of the stock prices they are getting from Microsoft as opposed to versus what the actual market value. They're trading well under that. I would dare say closer to $30 under that. So Microsoft is, you know, I, I don't want to say taking a chance. They are fitting the bill. They want this to be able to go through for multiple reasons. I talked about the three-headed Hydra. Uh, you know, you got the Call of Duty, uh, you know, um, aspect of it. You got King in mobile and, of course, Blizzard in PC. Uh, three monster aspects of this deal. Forget forget all of the IP that's coming with it. It's just ridiculous. Uh, what are your thoughts on Jason Schreier reporting? And, again, it's his opinion. He's entitled to it. He's wrong, but he's entitled to it. That Wall Street Journal is is, is thinking that his deal is going to fail. Hear, hearing what Hogue had to say. So there's a couple of things there. First is Hogue is a mergers and acquisitions lawyer, correct, and an absolute absolute expert on this topic. He's a phenom so, in his area in his field of 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 work. He is, yeah. So. I'm not. So anything that I say on that front is not going to carry as much weight as what he has done. So I defer to his knowledge on there. And if he's saying that this is, as you say, not an article to take seriously, then I won't. What I'm missing is um, the angle of the Bloomberg article. Right? I'm, I'm missing which is the cause and which is the effect. So they're saying that it's trading low because they believe that it's not going to go through. Or is he saying it's not going to go through because it's trading low? Right, yeah, it, 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 there really isn't a direction because I, I was when I was talking to a few of the guys from Prime Time, I'm like, wait a second, if you are a shareholder, you're on the board, and it's and it's trading on Wall Street right now for let's just say sixty eight dollars a share, and Microsoft is willing to give you ninety five for it. How is that a bad deal? As a matter of fact, I again, I don't have it in front of me. I'm, I'm running a live show. So I can't. I, I don't want to leave. You know what, what I'm doing. There's a subset of the community that uh, right here we have over. Wow, we have almost 400 people here, which is amazing. That according, let me see who brought this up last. Um, Xbox BG, and he's actually one of many. I'm sorry if I didn't shout you out. He says the Activision Blizzard shareholders have overwhelmingly voted to approve the deal, with more than 98 percent of the votes being for the deal than against it. 98%. So again, I don't know where he's getting the information. I'm simply reading it, folks. If that has happened, I don't see it in front of me because I, I, I'm running a live show. So uh, if you got the article, drop it into the into the chat and uh, and I'll and I'll read it and of course give you a shout out. But that's what they're reporting, Asa. Mm -hmm. And that's not a surprise as far as as far as we were aware. The stakeholders were already on board, and they still are. That's that's. To me personally, I think it will go through. The, the only area of challenge, a lot of people talk about this whole monopoly point and you look at the console space and it's just like, there's no issue there. There, there is no, no issue, issue with Sony. Yeah. The only, the FTC issue, which makes the stakeholder thing fairly irrelevant if the FTC do decide to kick up a fuss. Um, if they decide that cloud gaming and services is an important emerging market, that's where I can see them getting a little bit sticky. And I think it will be fine and go through. I'm not an expert, like I say, but if there is an objection, that's where it will be. Um, because it is hard to see that space. It's hard to see other companies being able to get into that space. It's already hard to see other companies being able to get in that space. And it getting harder is just the, the kind of thing that they don't like. But I think um, worst case, they might ask for some concessions, yes. like, like Call of Duty being multi-platform, but I don't think they're looking to block it. Obviously, not an expert, but we'll see. Yeah, and again, only time is going to tell. Uh, again, mm -hmm. one of the things that could almost immediately be removed from the conversation, Asa, is monopoly. That That is a word that was thrown around uh, almost immediately when the deal was announced. And uh, Embrace a group, folks. Uh, if you don't know who they are, they, they're closing in on 80 studios that they own. They own a huge amount of the marketplace. Um, and obviously, uh, they just came forward recently and said that they have no uh, uh, plans of slowing down, adding more additional studios to their growing lineup. That's that they, they said that publicly. Uh, this also comes on the same week, a few weeks ago, where Sony's Jim Ryan says that we are currently working with other developers to bring them into SIE PlayStation. So on top of the seven acquisitions 
uh, five from last year, two from this year, one of which is $3.6 billion for Bungie, they are adding more. Uh, so when, when you start talking about if you're, if you're banging this drum for Monopoly, I'm going to ask you, please stop because you're making yourself look like a boob. Don't, don't do that because that's, that's not where this deal is going to get hung up. You're absolutely right. The uh, services and cloud situation uh, could, could potentially be uh, you know some rough waters. Uh, I personally don't think so because if you look what Microsoft has done, they've spent billions of dollars over years building this infrastructure and and again i'm 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 not saying i i don't know what's going on with the deal i i have ten thousand subs big deal no one cares right um so i i'm not sitting in the boardroom i have stock in microsoft sure but i'm not sitting in the boardroom making these decisions but i i think it's safe to assume that uh the 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 crosshairs that we know that many senators have for big tech companies Microsoft is not one of them. They are currently uh, very, very embedded into working with the government here. Uh, you know, uh, you know, the FTC, I think a lot of this grandstanding that we're seeing from the politicians who don't know anything about gaming are it's an election year, folks. And I'm sure that after the grandstanding, there's some they're having drinks. And again, my opinion, I could be a thousand percent wrong, but I think that this deal does go through. I, I don't think it's going to get held up at all. I think that Jason Schreier, you know, you know what I equate him to, Asa? He is a tabloid journalist. That's what he is. You know, he, he you know, the, the same inquirer that you see standing on the uh, on the on the market line, that's what his 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 articles equate to. Again, that's my opinion. You can disagree, you can love me, you can hate me, whatever. Uh, and I love the fact that he was called out. Uh, specifically by Hogue, who, again, is an acquisitions lawyer. He understands these this particular situation much more. And I, th I, and I think it's incredibly reckless of him to put that out there, specifically for Bloomberg. I'm, I'm actually very surprised that they would allow that because they're, they're, they're you know, a pretty re respected publication. <laughs> yeah, they've got that. Hi, Kim Fuller. I think that's his name, though, um, who they let talk. So I wouldn't put it past them to... To allow things like this, the the thing with Jason Schreier that um, that made me wonder. I, I was never massively perturbed by his work or anything, but when he leaked the Starfield trailer immediately before the Xbox show, that that did seem spiteful, and that was like, hmm, what is it? Well, why? why why would you do that? Yeah, I mean, during the last year's E three, like like ten minutes before the show, he just showed their biggest trailer for some reason. And it's like that's that's not that's not how it is. Don't do that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's again. Listen, I'm I'm not going to get into explicits. I'm not going to start name calling. We don't we don't need to do that. Listen, your your opinion of Jason Schreier may be the same of mine, maybe worse. Um, but he is a tabloid writer. Uh, today's another example of 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 his uh, shenanigans, if you will. And uh, I I am glad that Hogue did put that this put this post out there. I tried to get Hogue on tomorrow morning's breakfast with boom but he is loaded with work so unfortunately we're going to try and get him the, the week after and maybe we'll have something to talk about regarding the merger that's currently being voted upon and based on what people are saying in the in the um a uh, casual k just uh put out there moments ago voted passed at 98 percent um let's see Let's see. Outbreak podcast uh, says uh, Dobar Gaming shareholders at Call of Duty and Overwatch 2 publisher Activision Blizzard voted overwhelmingly Thursday to approve the $69 billion sale to tech giant Microsoft. Ya this is coming from Yahoo Finance. So there you go, folks, live on the air. Uh, it has been approved by the board, and that is one less hurdle than uh, Microsoft has to worry about. Uh, I had a strong suspicion that it was going to go through simply because of what it's trading on Wall Street, which is under $70, and Microsoft is paying $95. So, of course, that article from Bloomberg probably is going to get taken down because, well, it look, makes them look stupid, specifically the two people that wrote it. Um, and, uh, you know, again, so typical. So, so typical. Uh, but listen, folks, that's your show. We do these things. We're in and out, 60 minutes, 70 minutes. Uh, I bring a guest in each and every week. Uh, I got a couple of guests lined up that are, I'm really interested to sit down and talk with. Next week's guest is going to be Mr. Bad Bit. That's right. Uh, the voice 
of the uh, of, of the of one of the best PlayStation podcasts around. He's going to be sitting down with me for seventy minutes to talk Xbox because you know hopefully by then we'll have some Halo to talk about because I think is it am I am I wrong with that that the Halo season two launches next week, Asa? I think so. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. So by the time Thursday comes along, I, I've actually will probably have played with Joe and several people like Kaysante and, and and many people in the community. Uh, on the new big team battle map, which I cannot wait to play. Uh, but Asa, we got to sell your brand, brother. We got to tell people about Game On Daily. Uh, what you guys do both on the website and on the weekly uh, uh, you know, podcast that you do uh, with uh, Gaz, who's uh, an absolute fan favorite. You guys really do bring it. Uh, congratulations again on crossing 10,000 subscribers. Uh, this year, uh, that's something that you did, something that I did, something that we've seen the Iron Lords do. Uh, it's it's an, a massive accomplishment, and that's because of all the hard work that you're doing. And that comes in the same year that Xbox Era, friends of yours, have uh, did as well. So the little guy is now seeming to 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 get to some high marks, and you guys have crossed it. Please sell your brand, brother. Tell everyone about GameOnDaily.com, but more importantly, where people can check out the weekly shenanigans. On your mm, I'm terrible. I'm terrible at, at promoting our brand. I really should do. Um, <laughs> it's nice that you mentioned all those other people hitting those milestones as well, because Game on Daily was pretty much set up to help with that. Like that's why yes. we exist. So seeing others in the community, yourself included, thriving is is amazing. And I love that. I love every bit of that, and I love that you mentioned all of those people. Um, Game on Daily. For you, for those that don't know, obviously we've got, we've got the YouTube channel. You've mentioned the show. We have a show every Saturday. Um, 9 p.m. in the UK, so 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and you can work it out from there. Uh, please do come along and check it out. It's a, it's a good place to, to be. Um, but we've also got the platform, GameOnDaily.com, which is a news aggregation and social platform that we've been building for a long time. We're still building. We've got loads of features coming, but it is going to be phenomenal as soon as we get more people on there and talking. And just take a look at it. It's slick. It's fancy to look at. You get all the news there. And it's got great things coming to it. That's it. Um, I'm also personally on Twitch and YouTube fairly frequently on the off days when Game On Daily aren't doing things. So if you want to check out my Twitch channel, that's um, Acer underscore Game On Daily over there. And I'm on Twitter and all the other places. <laughs> yeah, and I, I would imagine that, uh, like I said, uh, you know, your last week's show was was really amazing. You had it was you had one of the most robust open people on your show and David Jaffe. Uh, obviously there was a lot of talk about what happened. Um, you know, people just being just straight up terrible. I, I listen, I, I don't agree with everything Je uh, uh, that he says. Uh, and, and, and that's fine. You know, we, we, we'd all, we don't all have to agree. David Jaffe is a powerhouse person in the community. Uh, he is an ex developer for Sony uh, creator, you know, a guy he helped create and make Kratos who he is with his God of war creations. Um, and uh, even though I don't agree with a lot of his uh, his takes, what was done to him was just gross. Uh, it was it was just it was it was very sad to see people speak about another human being live on the air like that. I'm glad he gave him the business. And of course, that is a big show for you guys having him on last week. So if you missed uh, David Jaffe uh, and, 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 and in raw fashion, of course, go check out last week's game on daily uh, with him, Gaz and of course, Asa. Uh, they did an amazing job. And, of course, get over there and subscribe to their channel. But, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's your show. We had almost 400 people here. And I can't thank you enough for hanging out with us for over an hour. Of course, again, tomorrow morning, breakfast is doing uh, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be talking about the board passing the, uh, nine, by, uh, you know, passing the deal by 98%. We're going to be talking about some st Sony stumblings that are making the rounds and uh, whatever other breaking news happens. Uh, but, folks, again, uh, if you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the uh, uh, the bell um, um, alert. So every time I go live, you get alerted to it. I do four live shows per uh, per week. 
um, 16 live shows per month, and they're all produced by just me. And, and of course, my wife does help on the back end with finding the stories and writing some things. Just, just um, really quickly interrupt, just if, if anybody's not aware of how hard Boom works, obviously <laughs> you see the front end, you see these shows, but the amount of information that he sent me prior to this, the stats and the details, the whole of the Microsoft press briefing um, or financials, <laughs> I've got all of those. He just he puts in so much work behind the scenes as well as the tip that you see live. So great work, Boom, keep it up. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate the compliments. Yeah, a lot of people don't know what goes on. I'm a perfectionist, folks. Um, behind the scenes, I I, I do the I, I do my due diligence. I mean, I, I get it wrong. I've gotten it wrong live on the air before. It's It happens, but I try not to. Uh, and I do put a lot of work in. And thank you for for recognizing that, Asa. D definitely, I definitely super appreciate that. But listen, folks, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. Hit the like button, folks. Let's get these likes out there. Let's get this this particular episode and Double Barrel Gaming into the positive algorithms known as the uh, the Bermuda Triangle of YouTube, which we'll never all figure out. And you never know when you're going to win or lose with them. Um, and of course, I'm going to close out the show with something that is important to me, folks. Hopefully, one day be important to you. And that's something that my dad taught us when we were kids. And he said, Craig, treat others how you want to be treated. And also, it doesn't cost anything to be nice. You live by those rules. And I can guarantee you, you're going to have an awesome day. So take care, everyone. We'll see you next week on the newest episode of X Vlog Live.